And speaking with ET now, Vinita wanted to begin by discussing. Uh, wanted to begin by discussing with you the performance that we saw in the last quarter was largely in line with street estimates on the top line. Going forward into FY25, what's the expectation? Is it expected to be better, more of the same? What are the factors at play here? Uh, yeah, so uh, one, uh, you know, fiscal year 24 has been a um, uh, uh, tremendous term turnaround of our business um, with uh, margins improving quarter over quarter and uh, um, also, um, you know, um, really uh, um, um, solidifying our uh, business on uh, sustainable products going forward. So as we look at uh, fiscal year 25, uh, we feel uh, confident of growing our business double digit, uh, as we mentioned, um, you know, on the back of um, the, our two major markets, uh, India and the US in particular, but also our other regions that have, are at a, um, you know, smaller scale and have got more headroom to grow. So on the revenue front, we feel pretty good about uh, the prospect of growing our business double digit. And on the EBITDA front, um, you know, we feel, um, uh, again, uh, very confident of sustaining the 20% plus uh, EBITDA level throughout uh, fiscal year uh, 25. Um, you know, on um, the profitability, again, of our two key uh, um, uh, business drivers, uh, again, the U.S., where the profitability has improved substantially in fiscal year 24, and um, India, which has got uh, a very strong uh, margin profile to start with and continue to um, uh, build um, operating leverage as we grow our business. So that plus uh, our uh, continued efforts on uh, driving efficiencies give us tremendous amount of confidence to continue to grow our business on um, a profitable basis in fiscal year 25. Vinita, can we have a little more specifics on the margin outlook for FY25? You mentioned 20%. Is it the full year, 20% uh, for the full year FY25? And should the margin improve to 23% in the second half of FY25? Will, is that a possibility? Can you help us with some range? So we have uh, shared that uh, in the next two to three years, we would expect uh, the EBITDA margins to get to the 22-23% level. Uh, in the near term, we are continuing to invest on the R&D front in, um, um, you know, our complex generic platforms, in particular, driving the inhalation uh, pipeline further um, into the products that we have targeted, plus injectables, accelerating our injectables portfolio. So we expect our investment in R&D to go up as well in fiscal year 25, um, you know, and, uh, and still sustain the 20% plus uh, EBITDA margins for the year. Um, so, you know, in the, as we look at um, rolling out our, uh, uh, you know, pipeline and continuing to grow our uh, business um, in India, US, plus other regions, we would expect uh, to get to that 23, you know, 22, 23% level in the next two to three years. Okay, that's good to hear. But, uh, you know, Nilesh and Ramesh, before I come to you, let me just finish that part of the conversation with Vinita. Uh, Vinita, the other thing that we have been reading of late is the fact that the U.S. price erosion is settling a bit. Uh, there is that big drug shortage that U.S. is uh, kind of dealing with as well. But despite all of that, your U.S. revenue were a bit mixed. Help me marry the two as to what do you expect the U.S. revenue growth to be like from here on? Yes, actually, it was a really strong quarter for us. Um, you know, we had uh, some impact of seasonal products. So, um, you know, the uh, flu season products, including albuterol, has, uh, um, you know, um, declines with, uh, the ch with, with the drop in the flu season. So we saw that impact quarter over quarter. But uh, we continued to grow uh, teotropium. Um, we also benefited from the drug shortage opportunities. We had a couple of products where we were able to um, really um, help serve the market, uh, you know, uh, that we had not anticipated um, thanks to a supply chain, um, you know, resilience. Um, and, uh, um, you know, Darunavir, uh, which saw additional competition in the last quarter, uh, in, in you know we we certainly saw decline there uh, as anticipated, but overall um, the quarter came in ahead of our expectations. 
Um, and um, also at a profitability level that was uh, better than uh, Q3. Right. Nilesh, uh, as far as uh, your momentum is concerned, uh, the India business uh, uh, momentum we are talking about, it has performed in line with the IPM. Can we see FY25 and 26 growing better than IPM and is that uh, happening on a sustainable basis? So we you know, adjusted for one-off, we grew at about 25% ahead of the market. Um, and our goal, you know, as we've stated in the past, is to grow 30% ahead. So, you know, somewhere within that 25-30% range, we would expect to go. The market has been a little sluggish, as you would have seen, um, including in Q4. And therefore, the growth rate in Q4 has been less than what we would have liked it to be. But we do expect it to pick up. Um, we're already seeing a nice bounce back in in April. So uh, um, we'd certainly love to get back to the double digit kind of growth uh, for the, you know, for us, um, backed by reasonable growth in the market itself. Our big therapy areas are doing well. So in cardiology, we're well ahead of the market, respiratory significantly ahead of the market growth rate. Um, diabetes has been a challenge in the past. Uh, now we're close to market growth. Again, in FI25, we would expect to grow ahead of the market in diabetes as well. Okay, Nilesh, that point is taken. But Ramesh, what in your sense as well? The gross margins have improved 1.5% on a sequential basis. Uh, what do you think was the key, a key driver there? And what about the growth outlook from here on? I could take the turn. Uh, essentially, uh, there's, of course, the buoyancy on the top line in a, and um, the sales mix, which has contributed. Apart from that, uh, you also find some tailwinds when it comes to, in fact, input pricing. Um, and we also had a higher inventory that we took on. And all of this, despite the fact that uh, freight rates have been a little higher because of fact, the Red Sea issues and the like. Um, so I would really attribute this to, uh, you know, real operational, the kind of focus that we had on, uh, um, on bringing down the overall cost, um, you know, which is essentially coming in from alternate vendor strategies, routes to synthesis and the like. Uh, it contributed tremendously to, in fact, the overall gross margin um, expansion. Vinita, were you been able to gain market share in your Spriva uh, drug? And also, how much market share target do you have for this important drug for the full year, the new year? Yeah, so we had expected to be at uh, the 30% level in um, the first 12 months, and we are there right now, 10 months into the launch. So feel pretty good about our position in Spriva. And we'll continue to assess as we look at uh, uh, the next couple of months, uh, the brand has also announced that uh, they're going to change the uh, you know, uh, out-of-pocket uh, cost for the patients. We will continue to monitor it and determine if we need to really change a strategy. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, you know, we'll build upon this 30% share that we have uh, established so far. Sure. A word on the Spiriva generic also, Vinita, because the... Uh, the volumes have reduced a bit give, given the innovator has been shifting patients to respi mat also if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, what's the expectation going forward from this drug? Are you kind of bringing it down or scaling it down given the competition? Yeah, there's been no real change in the competitive landscape or, uh, you know, the brand uh, and the shift to respi mat has continued on the same trend as before. So there's no real material change. Vinita, what are the plans to expand Lupin's diagnostic business? There's a lot of action happening in that side of the business in the industry. What are Lupin's plans there? So we have a we have a clear growth plan. Um, our aspiration is to be one of the top five players in the next five years. Um, but the long way to go on that. Um, you know, um, we would go deep in the markets that we exist. Um, Lots of lots of stuff happening there. Um, still very small in the bigger scheme of things. Obviously, our main focus in India remains the prescription business. Um, but but this is a nice opportunity. I think we're well recognized as a as a trusted player in this space already. Um, and I think that's a great platform for us to build on. Okay, on that note, Nilesh, Ramesh, as well as Vinita, we let you go. Appreciate you making time and speaking with us today on ET Now. So that's the management of Lupin. It was a good show coming in from the company, at least on the revenue fr uh, front. The margins were better than expectation as well. And the management clearly quite hopeful of the next year growth to be quite strong. But staying with the pharma space, Dr. Adi's to report its numbers later.